Hi again, today I'm going to be working on a superhero character design. Um, this is my reference comp. It's based off of Ms. Tiza. She's a recording artist in Las Vegas and um, her manager wanted her to be like a superhero character. So, starting off, I'm using the palette knife brush. It's by Adonis. I got it from his DeviantArt collection. You can find it at adonis.deviantart.com. And I really like it because um, it kind of resembles like a pencil when you're just sketching stuff out. So I just, um, on a layer underneath the one that I'm sketching on, I just like wireframe the pose based on um, the comp of the pose that I found. She's just gonna have her hand on her hip and be holding a microphone, like just just to kind of display the outfit, figure out the look of you know the superhero. When I was getting kind of the brief on what they wanted, um, there weren't a whole lot of details. Just basically, you know, I got a couple pictures to work with. Um, they like the corset from Ben Helsing, and uh, she likes pink. So that was pretty much, and the fact that she's a musician, so that's pretty much it. So I'm sketching it out um, just to kind of just get get a point to get started. The main purpose of this video, uh, I had a lot of people kind of wanting something a little more real time to see to see how I work and so this one is going to be mainly about line work how I um, sketch it in Photoshop and then pull it into Adobe Illustrator for the lines or yeah her head's really big right here so you just um, grab the lasso tool select it the part that you want to mess around with and since this is just a sketch it didn't have to be precise then I hit command T to transform it and just pull in the little, um, hold down the shift key to keep your proportions the same, and then pull everything in and then hit the check, check box to say that it's okay. So anyway, um, like after I finished the line work, I was almost like to my deadline, so I had to stop recording because it makes my computer go a lot slower. So um, I have, you know, me working on this image. I've got some clips to show you how to do the line work and um, how, to, how to color an eye. So I turned off the layer on me of the white wire framing so I could just see what I'm working with as I try to kind of figure out the rest of her costume. At this point you can see all I really have is the corset because it's pretty much all I had to go on and the rest I'm making up. So I wanted to do some kind of superhero -y pants. I just felt like the whole concept wasn't uh, like costumey enough. So I'm gonna play around with two options. If you're working with something that you don't think is gonna maybe stay on the sketch, you, you know, you can always add more layers. Um, in your layers palette and sketch on top of that. So I think my first thing I was just gonna go classic with hot pants and um, fishnets and that just seemed like you know something Britney Spears would wear in concert. So I just kind of designed these like cut out leather pants and um, it's like a pant boot combination sort of situation. So I think that'll work better. Um, as far as I'm not really that experienced in character design, to be perfectly honest, this is one of the first times that I've actually been commissioned to do it. Um, you know, obviously I draw a lot, but it's just usually for my own gratification. So, so yeah. Now I'm going to save the sketch and pull it into Illustrator. You can do this a number of ways. You can either just copy it or um, save it as a JPEG and open it. Now this line art brush that I'm using in Illustrator, it's actually called Line Art Brush. It's by Jim Rowe at jimrowe.deviantart.com. And you can make your own line art brush. I just figured why reinvent the wheel. He's kind of already done it. It's got a, a tapered edge. And um, you'll notice that I'm just using the brush tool instead of the pen tool. I wanted um, the lines to kind of flow and be a lot more like I drew them out, but I'm using a Wacom bamboo. I don't have like a Cintiq or anything like that, so you know, I don't even, not even an Intuos. So the sensitivity isn't that great, the response isn't perfect. So you'll notice that my line work is really loose, there are a lot of spaces between it, but I still want to get that flowing out of it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back later and kind of piece together and tweak the line work. But I feel like I'm trying to develop the best way, you know, for me to do this in Illustrator. And I feel like I really like this method just because um, if you do your line work in Illustrator, you've got it as a, as a vector, you can make it however big, however small, and then just pull it back into Photoshop and color on top of it. So I just have, um, you know, like I said, the brush tool, and I'm just making sweeping lines. Um, you know, I hit Control Z a lot if I notice that it's crap. 
I have my sketch on one layer and I've locked that layer so that I don't actually accidentally draw on it and then I do the line work on top of it and you know you toggle the sketch layer on and off to see kind of kind of how you're progressing. So now I'm going to go on and fix the line. I'm going to use the direct selection tool. The um, shortcut uses the A. It's a little white arrow and um, you select the endpoints and move them around. When you're using the direct selection tool, you can either select the endpoints or um, the uh, anchors. The anchors, you pull around to adjust the level of the curve. An endpoint, you move to adjust the position of that particular endpoint. Or if you want to move the whole line, you select the whole line. But um, you just kind of play it by ear. I'm trying to just get all my lines to intersect each other so that I don't have all those gross spaces and it's actually kind of looks like a tight sketch. I can um, also go back and change some of the line weights. Um, with this line art brush, it's a little tricky because the shape of any um, specialty brush sometimes influences the way that it looks. Right now I'm getting rid of the extra points. I'm using the delete anchor point tool, which um, you know, if you hold down the pen tool, it'll pop up or you just hit the minus sign and you get that. You can add anchor points, you can delete anchor points, you know, and it just helps to like improve curves and stuff. So when you have the guides turned on, you see the little green lines, it kind of points, it lets you know when your two points are on top of each other. And that way, um, I'll show you a little later, you can go in and actually join them together and have one line segment. So, you know, if you want them to be, to be like influencing the shape of one another. So now, um, I actually did speed it up a lot here because I'm just working on the details of the corset. I had, you can see my reference picture in the background. I have it in another window in Photoshop and it's just kind of layered over it just to give me an idea of where the lines are for the corset. I'm going to do a lot more detailing when I actually color it so these lines aren't like set in stone kind of, so, you know, they're just basically just, just get the shape of it and you know, the construction. So now I'm actually using the circle tool. I'm going to go in and make the little clasps. Um, so to get a perfect circle, you just use the circle tool, and I grab the pen tool. This is kind of a more precise shape. So when you're using the pen tool, you have the option to make a curve or a corner. It'll automatically, if you just click and move somewhere else, it'll make a corner for you. But if you click and hold, you know, if you hold down your click and drag it out, you're going to get those um, anchors, and, and that's going to change the curve of your lines. So as I pull that out, you know, it, it, it curves it out. And if you don't want the curve that you've already started to influence the rest of your line, you click on the point that you've made with holding down the Alt key, and then it'll delete the anchor for, you know, for the previous line so that it won't influence it. Um, it takes a little while to get used to the Bezier curves, but it's a lot more handy than going point by point. So now I just grouped the shape and was duplicating it. Um, when you're pacing in Illustrator, sometimes it like puts stuff all over the place. So if you hit Command F, it'll actually paste it in front. So now I'm going to show you how to join um, a couple of, of anchor points. Because with this line art brush, I, the thickness is really influenced by the length of the line. So what you want to do is um, you get your direct selection tool and you're going to move the point from one line over the point from another so that they're laying right on top of each other. And then you're going to select the two points at once by uh, clicking down and holding down your mouse and um, making it like a little selection box. So you have both of the lines selected. You're going to light up and then um, you're going to go to Path, Join. You can also hit Command J. And it's going to ask you if you want to do a corner or a smooth join. And for these you want to do a corner. If it's part of the same like long line, you want to do a smooth and then, so now you see it's all one path as opposed to a different point. So that's how you join a couple of paths. So now I'm going to move it back into Photoshop. I select it all. They will file, you know, select all. Copy. And we're going to go back and open up our Photoshop file. Drag it back over. Close, you know, um, delete my own sketch layers and hide them. And now we're going to go and select paste. And it's going to ask you if you want to paste this smart object, pixels, path, or shape layer. A smart object references back the original file. Pixels is just like pixels. I like to use pixels, and then you just have to click the, the checkbox in the upper right hand corner um, to say that you know it's in the right position. You can size it here. Like it looks like garbage when you pull it in, but it'll smooth out once you hit the OK. So, like I said, you're ready to color. You know, you have it on its own layer. You're gonna lock that layer so you don't color over it. And um, I'll just show you, you know, what I ended up with after. 
a few more hours. Um, it took a little bit, but you know, that's it. I hope you enjoy. For more of my stuff, check out my website, chrismickens.com and my DeviantArt page. And thanks so much for watching.